Hello everyone and welcome to mentoring activities and as all of you know <clears throat> we as a career coaching department are preparing these kind of mentoring activities twice in a week it will be held twice in a week so uh, you can join and benefit from this presentation so what do we do in these mentoring activities we will look at the interview questions like soft skill questions and uh, technical questions we will review them discuss them and we try to explain you the best approach all right so today we are going to be discussing five questions two uh, for example the first one will be why do you want to be a career engineer and what is jenkins second one and the third one will be like <clears throat> what is uh what kind of data types do you know in java and the third fourth one will be the method in java and the fifth one will be static blocks in java we collected some uh, easy questions for the beginning because not everyone is good at java so that's why we are starting from easy questions and then we will switch to uh harder hard questions as well so uh, let's start let's jump into the first question this is the top skill question which is very hard which is very challenging why do you want to be a QA engineer QA automation engineer so as all of you know this is very challenging question it is really hard even if you are another if you are a doctor or if you are a teacher it's really hard to answer it's really hard to give the best answer for this question but i've done a lot of research and then i collected some good answers and i i saw uh, i saw one qa engineer who who had a lot of experience answering on this question and then i collected his answers as well so uh why do you want to be a key automation engineer so you can say for the beginning i'm a perfectionist and i like and quality matters me the most so uh, this is uh, i think this is the best thing to answer at the beginning because if you are perfectionist then there is a high ch highest chance that you can be a good uh, automation engineer. You can be a good tester if you are a perfectionist. And then you can say, I'm a good observer and pay attention to details. So this is the thing that you will do every day. You need to be very, uh, you need to be very curious and then you need to pay attention to anything that happens on software, on software. And you can say then, I'm pretty good at finding errors. Yeah, this is the uh, this is the main thing that we need to do. We need to find the defects and errors that application may cause, and we need to be uh, we need to find uh, errors as, as soon as possible, and we need to report it as fast as possible because the app application should be error free. And you can say then. I'm curious and I want to know how everything works. And uh, I like to know end-to-end -end functionalities. So as a QA, you need to know the application well, very well, because you need to test the application. To test the application, you need to have good idea, good understanding what can cause an issue or um, what will happen when you do some kind of actions. And if you know application very good, you may guess some errors that users may cause. You can test the user from user's perspective. All right, and you can also add this uh, thing like, I have excellent communication skills, both written and verbal. And I love to interact with people like project manager uh, or developers or your team as a tester and i like documentation 
because as a tester, you need to prepare a lot of documentations at the beginning. You'll, you'll need to prepare uh, test cases. Uh, you need to do test analysis. And then you need to write your codes according to that, uh, according to test design that you have prepared. Well, uh, and the next reason can be it's in demand, or you can say it at the beginning, because uh, if you want a high growth and high paying career, so QA automation engineer is a very good approach, is a very good job for you. Uh, you will not have a lot of pressure as a developer, but you will earn um, money approximately the same as developers. If you are if you will gain experience, you will uh, earn a lot of money. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> and there is also big chance to improve your uh, level into project manager or, uh, or or PO, like project owner. All right. So I think it was helpful. It is really hard to answer for this question, but I did my best to uh, answer for this question. All right, so let's jump into the next question. What is Jenkins? I, I, I hope everybody um, interacted with uh, Jenkins. I think you had a lesson for this, but let's say, what is Jenkins? Uh, Jenkins is an open source automation tool, which is written in Java. And it was created for continuous integration purpose. We can integrate the things, we can do a lot of things with the plugins because uh, Jenkins supports more than thousands of plugins that you can work with, that you can use. And Jenkins is used to build and test your software project continuously. Uh, it, it makes easier for developers to integrate changes to the project. If there are uh, little changes, they can interact, they can integrate to the project. And then it makes easier for users to obtain a fresh project. Okay. All right. So we have we had an idea. What is Jenkins? What is uh, CI CD? It means continuous integration. CI means continuous integration, and CD means continuous delivery. So, as I explained, it was built for continuous integration. So, what is continuous integration? It is testing every uh, each changes in the project and then reporting it let's say developers there will be a lot of developers like um, four or five developers and they are working constantly at the same time and they are making some changes on they are making some changes on project and they are releasing it like they are moving it to a repository so when one developer will move their code to the repository. Jenkins will take it, it will build. It will take that code and then add it to the working project, say, work, working environment. And then it will test whether the new code is working okay with the previous codes. If it's working fine, uh, it will report. If it's not working fine, it will report. So if it's not working fine, it will report that there is a mistake in the code. So you need to change it. So you need to make some changes. If, what is <clears throat> continuous delivery? So continuous delivery is a software approach uh, in which teams produce software in, short, in, a, in a short life cycle by ensuring that those, uh, those uh, softwares are ready to release. It relies on build and test, right? So the idea is if you have a plan, 
you will give it to the developers and then they will prepare their codes. Then you will add it to the software and test it. So these parts should be automated according to CD. These parts should be automated. And every time when there will be new changes, it should be ready for release. So we need to be ready to uh, release it anytime. It means continuous delivery. You need to be ready always. All right, next question is data types in Java. I know this is very easy question for some of you, but some of you may, may not answer for this question properly. So when the interviewer will ask you, what, what kind of data types do you know in Java? You can say, uh, actually there are two types of two types of data types in Java, which is primitive data type and non-primitive, or some may call it as reference data types. All right, let's start with <clears throat> primitive data types. In primitive data types, we have eight kind of, uh, which is Boolean, which contains true or false, and a char, which contains single character. And we have byte. Those are where <clears throat> those are numeric data types. Byte is the smallest uh, numeric data type, which can hold um, twenty eight plus twenty eight and plus one hundred twenty eight uh, number until one hundred twenty eight, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, there is short as well, which can hold bigger data type than bigger number than byte. And there is integer that we use constantly. It can hold a very big number, very huge number. And there is long. Um, this is very, uh, this can hold very huge data type, huger, uh, bigger than integer. All right. There is also float, which is uh, decimals, which can hold decimal numbers. Like float and then double. All right, we have also non-primitive data types, which are arrays. As you know, arrays can hold many, many data with the same data types, many values with the same data types. And there is also class. It is also non-primitive because we cannot assume it's, uh, it's uh, memory can be bigger or can be smaller. And there is interface and string and enums. You may mention only array and string and all of them as an object. Okay. What is the method? I know this is very easy question. Everybody knows how to create a method, but uh, when they ask you, you may not uh, have a good explanation. You may know how to use it, but you may not explain it very well. So at the beginning, method is a block of code that performs specific action. It is like a functionality. You will create it once. The idea of method is uh, you can create code once and you can reuse it. So it will it will reduce the duplication in the software. All right, method, uh, method has some parts that we need to explain. It has access modifier like public, static. It can be public, static, void, uh, or private. And it can be static, means in class level. It may not be static as well. You may not put it and there is data type. If it's void, it means it will not return anything. This method will not return anything. If it's string, so it's need will return uh, string. If it's an integer, it will return integer. So it has its name. Methods, will, we will need to give a name for our methods. And we can also add parameters 
when we are creating a method, like when we are calling that method, we need to give arguments. Okay, so it's accepting two integers and doing some action and printing it. So here we are giving two arguments, numeric arguments. We are calling that method by its name and we are giving its arguments. All right, good. Uh, okay, what is a uh, static block? All right, static block in Java uh, is a set of instructions that run once when we run our class. It is, uh, we can say a block of code that will run only once when we run our code. And it will be, it will run at the beginning, before main method, before anything, the static method will run. As you can see the output, there is main method, which is uh, which comes first, uh, and then there is static method. But when we run our code, static method is printing at the beginning and main method is pre printing after that. So it means whenever you put your static block, it will be a run first and once, right? And it is also called a static initialization block. The reason is you can create static instance here and then you can assign it before main method. For example, if you put it here, you can, you can write here some uh, functionality, you can uh, do some actions here and then assign it. When you run your main method, it will print the output. Like, if you can see, main method is coming first, and static method is coming after that. But we are assigning the data, which is i. And when we run our code, uh, it will be already assigned. We are printing that i in main method, and we are getting the output. So you can initialize anything before main method. All right, so that was all for today. And uh, we will constantly prepare new questions for you. And those, those will be easy and hard questions. We will try to answer. If you have any feedbacks or any questions, you can share it now. So uh, we will try to answer. As a QA engineer, we may not uh, need it all, all the time, but <clears throat> when you want to do some, for example, uh, I solved one question from the internet and it was the, um, we, I, need, I needed to check at the beginning one instance and then run that code in the main method, for example. I needed to get one uh, number. It, if, it sh if it will be less than zero, I needed to throw an exception. But if it's not, main method should print the output. So the idea is before main method, we are doing one action. We are checking it in static block. And then if it's less than zero, we are throwing an ex we are throwing an exception. Then uh, main method will not work, so your code may run faster. Uh, see you until next presentation. It will be held on Thursday, so uh, we will add new questions here and hope to see you again. Thank you very much. Thank you for your time.